Pokemon Sword and Shield is one of the most controversial entries to the Pokemon series. Currently the flagship of Pokemon on the Nintendo Switch, it is the first series to do many new things. Some of the features are something people have been waiting for a long time, like a dark type gym, and others uh, not really that big of a deal. If you like Pokemon, click that subscribe button and let other people know I exist by liking the video later on after you watch it. But for now, let's just jump right in today video, the new features of Pokemon Sword and Shield that were introduced this generation. Sword and Shield are a part of the core series, meaning there are plenty of other Pokemon games that have introduced new features and possibly some of these features, but were not a core mainstay of the series. Here Sword and Shield being core series of the generations, many of the new features have never been seen before in the core series. For example, the controversial expansion packs. Pokemon never technically had DLC before, and while there have been exterior programs that could be considered DLC, this was the first series to introduce an expanded region via downloadable content at a price tag to match. $30, the player would receive the Isle of Armor, an extra island, which provided players around a two-hour core story experience with lots of new Pokemon to capture, a new legendary to uncover, and a new rival to battle. Most games only introduced one rival, while games like X and Y had a friend system, and these friends would claim to be your rival, most people understood that really there's only one antagonist for the player. Other games like Sun and Moon introduced repetitive trainers like Howe and Gladion, but everyone accepts Howe as being the player's rival. Even though Gladion could be considered a rival too, it just wasn't. Speaking of rivals, Sword and Shield was the first game series to include version exclusive rivals. Depending on which game you bought would depend on which rival you would battle. Clara would be the poison type rival if the player had selected Pokemon Sword, and Avery would be the psychic type rival if you would have selected Pokemon Shield. Similar to the rivals, there are version exclusive gym leaders as well. Sword would have you face Bay, the fighting type user, and Pokemon Shield would have you fighting the trainer known as Alistair, the ghost gym leader. There is also Gordy, the rock type user for Sword, and Melanie, the ice type gym leader for Shield as well. However, unique gyms like this have existed existed in past games. Pokemon Black and Pokemon White were the first games to have the mechanic, although this consisted of gym leaders that both excelled with Dragon-type Pokemon. In Pokemon Black, players would have battled Drayden, and in Pokemon White, players would have battled Iris. These gym leaders were not only new introductions to the series of Sword and Shield, there is also the introduction of Dark Gym Leader as well, uh, one that just never existed before for some reason. Although, a solid theory is that Karen of Johto's Elite Four used to be the Dark Type Gym Leader before joining the Elite Four, we now have a Dark Type Gym Leader, so that's nice. And Sword and Shield are the only games that united every single core series of the game through through Pokemon Home and other online methods to transfer from Generation 1 all the way to the current generation in the core games. Sword and Shield's DLC also includes the Crown of Tundra, a region that is being touted as four times bigger than the Isle of Armor, making it the biggest DLC ever, and the second DLC ever created for Pokemon exclusively in the core series. Are you excited about the new features that were included in Pokemon Sword and Shield? Did you buy the DLC and do you think the price is justified. I'd like to hear your perspective in the comments section down below, and thanks for watching. I've been Heroes Pro Mario, and I'm signing out. As always, good gaming, God bless, and I will see you in the next one.